Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, we're going to set up a sonar sensor on the Arduino and then display the distance on the Nexion. What I eventually want to do is set up a test so I can measure the deflection on a wall. And I'm going to test both a sonar sensor and a radar sensor to see which is most accurate. So this will be the first in a, in a short series of videos. We're going to start in the Nexion. This is a fairly simple setup. All I have is the waveform on one of the pages. It's just a one page setup. I have a timer that's going to execute every 500 milliseconds. And then I have two variables. And I'm going to use the variables to create a triangle wave. And I want it to be, I don't want it to be from zero to, to however high it is. In this case, it would be um, 220. Instead, I just want to do a range within it. So we're going to set the first variable to be 50. So that means the low value will be 50. And we're going to have it go up to as high as 180. So that way it'll stay within the top and bottom. And I'm going to use the second variable. I'm going to set it to 2. So I'm going to step up in increments of 2 and then back down in 2. In the timer event, we have this add function here. And what it does is it adds a point on the, on the waveform. The way I have the waveform set up is to go, you can't really see it here, but it's set to go from right to left. So it's going to start over here and it's going to work its way to the left. And so we'll populate the wave that way. So we're going to add a value and it's going to be whatever VA0 is and we're going to start at 50, which should be around here. And then we're going to count up, and we're going to count up in twos. And, but if VA0 ever gets above 180, we want it to change it so VA val is negative 2 and it starts counting down. If it falls below 50, it's going to change to 2 and it's going to count back up. So we'll, we'll run this in debug now, now and I'll show you what I mean. So we have the screen here, and you can see that the line is going up. Now I'll time lapse this a little bit and you'll see it'll peak and come back down. I let it go for a complete cycle and now we'll uh, go back because I did forget to mention one thing. This add function right here is what we're going to send from the Arduino to add to this graph. But I'm, I went ahead and I've set this graph up to have two channels. And so in the command, when we write to this, even though it sets it to two channels, when you access the channels, they're zero based. So this add one, which is the ID of the waveform, and then the second number here is the channel. And so channel one is, is the value is zero. And when we send the command from the Arduino, we'll have add one comma one, and then comma the value. And you'll see that when we get to it. We're going to move on to the Arduino next. This is the Arduino file we start with. This is the Arduino file I always start with, or I have been recently. I have some stuff already in there, and that's just to work with the Nexion display. The things we're going to use in this video is we're going to use this end character, because when we send the string that add comma one, or add one comma one comma and the value, it has to end with this 0FF, 0FF, 0FF. So we're going to add that to the end of the string. For the delay, we're going to keep it at 500 milliseconds, so we're going to send the value every half second. The rest of this we're not really going to use because we're not going to get anything from the display. I am using a Nano, so I'm going to leave this here. So we're going to use the software serial on pins 2 and 3. And then we have to start both of them here. Now, the uh, I try not to use libraries if I don't have to. And so we're going to have to add some variables for that sonar sensor. So we're going to have a trigger variable. I tried making an echo variable, but you'll see if I delete the pin, it changes it to a restricted word. Since it turned red there, we can't use that. So I added pin. So we've got the trigger pin, I guess I could put pin up there, and then echo pin. And we're going to use 4 and 5 for those. And then we're going to keep track of the duration of the pulse, how long it takes to, after we trigger it, we get the echo back. And then we'll, we'll convert that into our distance. So these are the four variables we'll need for the sonar sensor. 
But since we've defined these pins, we have to set the pins up in the setup. So we'll go down there next. We're going to set the trigger to be an output, and then we're going to set the echo pin to be an input so we can read when the signal comes back. The way the sonar works is it sends the signal out and then it gets it back, and it determines how long it takes to do that. And that's pretty much it for the setup. Now we'll get down to the code. And in here, there, this is broke up into three sections. The first one is if we're collecting data from the NECTION, which we're not going to do in this one. And then down at the bottom is if the NECTION sends something, which is kind of the same thing, but this is more if we've requested it, and down here is more if the NECTION just sends it on its own. The only area we're going to worry about is this delay in here. So this function is going to run every 500 milliseconds, and that's based upon this delay length, which I pointed out earlier. And then these, this if-else statement here just kind of keeps track of the delay. I have an older video if you want to go back and look at that. And then I have this where it just turns the light on and off as just a test. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear the trigger for two microseconds. So we're going to set the trigger to low, in other words, digitally write low, and then we're going to wait two microseconds. And then we're going to fire it for 10 microseconds. So we're going to set it high for 10 microseconds, and then we're going to take it back to low. And then we're going to get the duration. And we use this pulse in, which is a built-in function in the Arduino, to see how long it takes to get the pulse back. And it'll be stored in the variable duration. And that's pretty much all there is to triggering the sensor and then getting the value back. And then we have to manipulate that duration into the values that we want to convert it to either centimeters or inches because it comes back in more of a time variable but then there's formulas that you can do to turn those into the other variables. The first thing we'll do is we'll print out this um, the duration of the pulse. So I'm going to upload this and we'll test it. And what I have here is I have the it's just a value that comes back and it's kind of a distance but I have my sensor over here on this screen so I'm going to put something in front of it and you'll see that this will change. Because right now it's reading over to, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little um, breadboard here. So if I take this and I put it in front of it, you can see that the value goes down as we get closer. And then as I move it further away, it goes up. So now we'll convert it over to measurements. We'll convert it to both centimeters and inches, and I'll show you the formulas for both. In order to get the centimeters, you take that duration, you multiply it by 0 .034, and you divide it by 2. And that gives you the value in centimeters. In inches, you take that duration, you multiply it by 0 .0133, and then you divide that by 2, and that'll give you inches. I'm going to run this now, and you'll see it in the serial monitor. You can see now we've still got duration. I'm going to turn off the auto scroll. And so the duration is 480. It comes to 8 centimeters and 3 inches. Now I'm going to put something in front of it here. About halfway. We'll see if that changes that to 5 and 2 maybe or 5 and 1. There we go, 5 and 1. So cut about a half. I'll take this away. and we're to 8 and 3 again. I guess 5 wasn't exactly half, but that's the way it worked out. So it seems to be working. Now we need to send a value up to the NECTION and display it on the graph. Since the centimeter is a larger number, we're going to send that up there just because we'll be able to see that better on the graph. So we have our serial 2.print we're we sending the add, and remember it has to be comma one or one comma one instead of one comma zero because we're going to write to that next channel. Then we're going to put the value of the distance that we calculated in centimeters, but that value was only eight, so we're going to multiply that by ten to get that up to eighty, just so it it's more it's higher on the chart, and then you'll see it go up and down as we adjust the the sensor. And then we need to follow it up with the n characters. And that's all we need to do to get it to the NECTION. The other thing we have to do is we have to check the ports. So 
So I'm going to go up to my tools. And I'm currently on COM port 11. And you can see that there's another COM port, COM 5. Since we're doing this in the simulator on the Nexion instead of uploading it to an actual Nexion display, we need to know what that other COM port is. So we have our Nexion display here, and to be honest with you, it should just be working. The color of the triangle wave is going to be this pink, and then the color of the signal or the measurement should be this yellow. So let's run it in debug and see if it works. You can see we have our triangle started. In order to get the input, we have to click on this user MCU input. We know it's COM5. Here's where you could get the wrong one. And then just hit start. This is what we're getting. We're getting add 1, 1, and then an 80, and then the end characters. And you can see that we're getting it here. And we know our value went from 50 up to 180, so that makes sense, that number that we're getting. Now we have our sensor here. I'll try and get it a little bit closer. And so now we'll put something in front of this and see if this yellow line goes down. And you can see that it's going down. And as I move this, since it's reading every half second, it's fairly responsive. If I take the sensor itself, I can get it all the way up to max. And what we're hoping to do is to move the sensor vertically up and down along a wall and then as this as the wall goes in and out hopefully we'll see a little bit of a change we'll have to speed it up to get a better resolution or move the sensor very slow one or the other and I'll experiment with that as we go through the next steps the other thing I had, I didn't cover this in the other waveforms, is I have both of these running at about half a second, so they're staying in sync. But I was wondering what would happen, are they completely separate waveforms? If I speed up the one waveform, will it just move ahead or will it make these lines space out? So I want to go ahead and try that real quick. I'm going to go to the timer here and I'm going to adjust this to be 200 milliseconds. So it's twice as fast, even more than twice as fast as the other signal coming in. And you can see that's moving across the screen a lot faster. So now if I turn this on, oh, I gotta stretch it to get it started. Bring it back in. And then we'll do something here to make this change. So we can track it. And if you look, it appears that they're completely separate waveforms, that this one is just starting to move further away from this one because it is running faster. So it should work for what we're doing. Even if I send two different signals, we should be able to track them. Now, if you wanted these to be in sync, you'd have to make sure that you're writing at the same moment in time because they could get out of sync, and that could be a problem too. But for our example, it should be fine. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.